I feel like it has been so long since I've shared one of these videos with you guys. We're back for some more epic meal prep. Oh. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am back to share with you some more epic meal prep. I feel like it has been a wicked long time since I've shared one of these videos with you guys. And I did have a meal prep video that was stocked full of new recipes. And then when my computer broke down, I lost everything that was inside of it, along with all of that footage. So it took a little time for me to kind of build up some of the things that I normally prep. Now I love sharing new recipes with you and there are just a few new recipes in this video that I haven't shared, but most of what I like to share with you guys is pretty much what I prep every single month. Things that make it so much easier just to function in our everyday life, especially doing a week long of grocery hauls and shopping for the entire month. When I come in, I have loads of produce and loads of meat and loads of things to put away. So it's so helpful to do meal prep right off the bat, get all of our produce washed and put away for what we need and all of our meat separated and all of that kind of stuff. So unfortunately, some of our meal prep is kind of repetitive because it's stuff that we do every month, but it's still stuff that I like it to share with you guys. So for now, I'm going to share with you what I filmed and I have a whole bunch of things to share with you guys. So I'm going to take you down to my kitchen and I'll show you what I've been prepping for the last month. So as I just mentioned to you guys, coming in after a week long of grocery shopping, I always have tons of produce from Costco, from Sam's Club, from HEB, from Walmart, all these things that need to get prepped. I don't know about you guys, but I like to clean my produce with cold water and white distilled vinegar. I know there are actual produce washes that you can buy, but I just prefer the big white distilled vinegar that I can get from Costco or Sam's. So we're gonna go ahead and prep some celery, some cut up broccoli, broccoli. I have a cantaloupe there, some tomatoes, some strawberries, some blackberries, some blueberries, and then some black grapes. So I just use a bowl and colander to wash my produce. I used to have a salad spinner. I'm pretty sure it's in storage somewhere. So when we go ahead and clean and organize the storage shed, I'm going to keep an eye out for it. But for now, I just use a plain old bowl and colander and I fill it with the water out of my water pitcher because I'm weird about the water here it's just not the greatest water that comes out of the faucet so when i'm washing produce i use the water out of my pure water filter and that little container was my white distilled vinegar that i keep in a small jar underneath the sink because i keep the big container up by my laundry room so once i got those blackberries all cleaned up i went ahead and just put them in our little dollar tree container and then i started another fruit to soak and in the meantime i'm cutting open this cantaloupe this cantaloupe was absolutely delicious i'm not a huge fan of cantaloupe because sometimes they're not sweet or not sweet enough for me but this was so good it was some kind of special texas gold kind of cantaloupe i was really 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 surprised by how sweet it was but our refrigerator once we pack it with a bunch of stuff after we come home for some reason it freezes and so it froze my cantaloupe and i ended up losing like a good third of my cantaloupe but it was not a big deal whatever we weren't really able to use from that other side i just went ahead and cut up and we used four smoothies and we ate on what i packed in this bowl and again my kids are not huge cantaloupe fans but they were really all about this one it was super good so then I cleaned up my workstation. I am pretty neurotic about keeping a clean workstation as I go along. And then once I was back to a clean counter, my blueberries were ready. So I just dumped them in the colander and now I'm loading them into the Dollar Tree containers. These Dollar Tree containers, I like them, but after a while the lids crack and then if air is getting in, then they're no longer doing their purpose. I really like the Rubbermaid Freshworks ones, I believe they're called, but they're pretty pricey. They're like $20 a container, so that's probably why I always end up buying the ones from the Dollar Tree, but if it's going to make my produce go bad, then maybe it's time to invest in those ones so that I have a little bit longevity on my fruits and veggies. 
but I'll probably just end up buying more from the Dollar Tree, let's be real. But needless to say, I got that one packed away. I am soaking the next fruit and then now I am prepping my celery. So I want your guys' opinion on your celery prep. So this particular time I tried something new and I'm not sure if it's the fact that I left the vinegar in the jar or if maybe they just didn't go as fast as I thought they would so they just went bad just in general but I had heard that storing your celery inside of a jar and filling it with water was the best way to keep your celery fresh so I thought that was amazing so I went ahead and packed my celery in a mason jar that I had and then I filled it with that fresh pure water and then I put in a little bit of the vinegar I gave it a good shake and I was hoping that that would keep them clean but then towards the end they started getting completely brown and they were soggy not crisp like I expected fresh celery to be so I'm not sure if it's the vinegar that I left in there or if I left them too long in the water but I've heard really good things about storing your celery in water but I just didn't feel like it worked out well this time so now I'm on to what was soaking and that was our tomatoes these tomatoes you guys they are seriously pricey but so worth the money i think they're like seven dollars or eight dollars or something for this tub but i got a huge container filled with them that i just leave on the door that everybody picks out of and then i was able to fill my snack boxes as well with all the tomatoes that were left over so i cannot complain about these now speaking of snack boxes, these are the little snack boxes that I make for myself that I find to be so useful because this is what I pull from the fridge when I am super hungry. So I use these little cups that have lids to put nuts in so that they don't get moist from the other items that I put inside of these little meal prep boxes. And these are like the little containers you would get from a restaurant when my husband and I ran Stoney's Pizzeria. These are the little sauce cups that we would use to give like ranch dressing on the long side of wings and so inside of two of them I put the really spicy pecans from Trader Joe's and then on the other side are the new pistachios from Trader Joe's the garlic and onion they're so good and then whatever tomatoes I couldn't fit inside of that Tupperware I just went ahead and put inside of those boxes I absolutely love tomatoes with these marinated mozzarella balls so I get these from Sam's Club and they're marinated in herbs and spices and olive oil and they're so delicious inside of these snack boxes so I usually do some kind of nut and then I do the tomatoes and the cheese and then I'll put in some kind of meat so I have the little sticks that I get from Trader Joe's they're like so salami sticks so I put some of those in there and then that was some spicy gabagol that I got from Costco and this is salami that I got from somewhere I don't know I usually buy like the deli packages from Costco that have the different flavors of salamis in there and I put those in there but I wanted some fruit so I had my grapes soaking and now they were done so I went ahead and drained them and loaded them in a Tupperware and then I saved some out to put in my snack boxes as well and then I also went ahead and did that with the strawberries. I love that sweet balance that kind of offsets the cheese and the meats. So yummy. And there are my little soldiers all lined up. I got my fruit, my tomatoes, my nuts, my meats, and my cheeses. And I usually make like four or five at a time. If I make anything more than that, some of the items inside start to go bad. And if any of the fruit gets moldy, it sits on top of the other stuff and it'll make the other stuff yucky. So I only make a few at a time. But like I said, you guys, if you have time to do this, I highly suggest it. It is definitely a step that saves me so much time later in grabbing something that I shouldn't grab. So I didn't have the camera on for everything, but here's just kind of an overhaul of what I did. So I washed the broccoli and broke it apart. One bag for the freezer for a dinner, one to munch on in the fridge, and then one in a pot that night 
for dinner and then you saw the celery this is the jar with the celery and water so i still want your opinion on that i'm super curious and then here was all of the other containers with our fruit so we had our grapes and then our tomatoes and in that bottom tupperware was the lettuce that i prepped and got that in there and then here's my leaning tower of those dollar tree containers so we have all of the berries stacked in there and then those are my meal prep containers back there but that was literally after filming and saying like whew that was tough then we were on to something else and of course I planned for myself meal prep that night as well silly me but I put breakfast on the menu and I also had to film another video because I filmed the pancakes that I made with this other half of the box so I made confetti pancakes I'll link that video up above for you guys to check out if you missed it and I put the rest of the box of mix in this bowl just to make waffles I usually make waffles and pancakes both of them at the same time when I do any sort of meal prep just so that I get it all done in one shot and then we have breakfast for the rest of the month now this was a store-bought box of pancake mix and waffle mix when you're using it as pancakes you just have to add water but when you're doing the waffle recipe you have to add in a little bit of oil so i went ahead and did that and then i whisked it all up and i put mine in some kind of like measuring cup or something. Anything that has a handle with a pour spout makes it really easy to use this particular waffle maker. I always use my coconut oil cooking spray from Trader Joe's just to spray down the inside of the waffle maker and then I'll just pour in and get my four waffles out of it. I absolutely love this waffle maker. This is linked in my Amazon store below. Anything you guys see within the videos, cooking wise, if I have it linked, it'll be down below in that store. But these plates for the waffle maker are reversible. So on the other side, it's flat. So you can use it like a griddle. You can even do pancakes on the one side or a quesadilla press. But I don't even mess with all that jazz, you guys. I just love it for making four waffles at a time because I usually can fill that measuring cup two or three times and I get two batches out of each measuring cup so I'll end up with 20 or 24 waffles out of one half of the box so that ends up being perfect coupled with everything else that we make we usually like I said make pancakes with it and the other things that we usually have meal prepped for breakfast this ends up being plenty to last for the month so I absolutely love having this on hand they're also super easy to reheat up these confetti pancakes are like 30 seconds reheated in the microwave with a little bit of butter and they're brought back to life and then the waffles we usually put those in the toaster when i do breakfast for dinner i always make the hash browns from trader joe's we love those and a pound of bacon and this was what was left over after dinner that was after because that's how much that i meal prep and then i'm able to just put it all away so i was able to pack one whole bag of waffles that i was able to put into the freezer and then i got out our old bag that we had in there and condensed it down there was only four waffles left from the last meal prep and I went ahead and added what was left of the pancakes pancakes always go first on these nights because I usually start with pancakes and the kids are hungry so they're eating them fresh off of the griddle and then they're full by the time I get to the waffles so in this bag I have our pancakes and the last few of the old waffles I put the new waffles a whole bag in the deep freezer and then that plate is what was left over from from dinner that night for my husband to pick on for when he got home from work. Speaking of my husband, these breakfast sandwiches are inspired all for him. He absolutely loves the way that I prep these and I keep these on hand. They are his go-to in the morning. So those are the croissants I get from Costco. I have a pound of boar's head white American cheese. I have some eggs. And then this is my little board of meat. So I had made a big ham and I had all this ham left over with the whole intention in mind of using it to make meal prep sandwiches. So I have that. I have the leftover bacon from the day before you guys saw I just prepped that bacon when I did all of that breakfast meal prep with the waffles and the pancakes and I cooked up some of the Mrs. Jones's sausage and I had one round patty I'm not even sure where that came from that was in the freezer so that was perfect for me to go ahead and get going now we're gonna start off by cracking the eggs 
I didn't know how many sandwiches I was going to be able to make. A dozen of those croissants come in one package and I had a few loose ones from the time before that we didn't finish. So I knew I had a fair amount but I try and figure in my head about one egg per sandwich. So I did 12 eggs although even though I got 14, 15 sandwiches. A dozen is what I went with and then I threw in probably about a third of a cup of milk into that dozen eggs and then I'm going to whisk that all together and then we're gonna put it on a sheet pan to stick in the oven so I spray it down really really good with some cooking spray to make sure that it does not stick and then we're gonna pour our scrambled eggs right into the sheet pan and then stick it carefully into the oven and I know it sounds a little bit bizarre but it puffs up like you can see and it ends up working perfectly for us to just cut it in the shape that we want to make it fit the sandwich sometimes I'll use a cup if I'm using round sandwiches to make a perfect round piece of egg but since we're doing the croissants the rectangles work out perfect and that is a more individual wax paper sheets that I also have from when we ran Stoney's we seriously had just placed a huge order and then the store closed down so we will have certain things I swear for the rest of our lives but I went ahead and cut opened all of those croissants. I stick one egg piece, one and a half slices of cheese, and then any kind of desired meat. So I usually don't double up the meats. I just do ham on one, bacon on another, and then sausage on another, and I separate them when I freeze them. So once I'm done, assembling them all together. I just stick them in gallon size freezer bags just like I do the waffles and pancakes and I label them on the outside for ham, bacon, and sausage and these heat up so perfect you guys. We leave it in this wax paper for one minute and then we take it out of the wax paper and put it in a paper towel for another minute and it's amazing now this bun you guys is the smart baking buns have i talked about the smart baking company with you guys if you've been with me then you know i love them and i don't have the croissants like the rest of the guys do i just don't want the calories and these smart baking buns just make it to where i don't feel like i'm missing anything so i just defrosted one bun for myself because i had so much of this ham left over and a few pieces of sausage so this is a sandwich that i ended up essentially having for myself and i love that so i have a discount code for the smart baking company that i'll leave in the description box you get 10 percent off your order and you get 10% off your order every single time that you order from them. It's not just the first time. Every time you use my code, you save 10%. So I think that that is great. And I order from them personally all of the time. So here's what we ended up accomplishing the very next day. And this is the dog food. So I've shared this in many meal prep videos. So I'll link my whole playlist down below. But this is just chicken and rice. Don't come after me for the corn. I do not give them a whole bunch. I just had a bag left over of mixed veggies that had peas, carrots, corn, and green beans. So I just dump that into the pot with the shredded chicken, the rice with coconut oil, and with pumpkin and the vegetables. And I I mix that all up and that's what my puppies eat on with a little bit of regular dry food each day and then here are all the breakfast sandwiches that we prepped and this was a month ago and we still have some here was what was left of the breakfast that my husband didn't eat plus those are apple pie fries can't show you guys that right now but you guys will see that coming up and then there was still more ham left I couldn't believe it so much ham from that ham that I got so I made a sandwich for me for Paul and for dad the very next day so we were already set for lunch now you guys we are on to what I made in that last video that I lost that I couldn't wait to share with you guys and that is me making these bacon and cheese garlic flavored croutons yes you heard that right 
So I have some olive oil, some Parmesan cheese, some garlic. That in that little Tupperware with the red top is a bacon grease. I always save my bacon grease from after making bacon and we use it in recipes like we're going to do right now. We're going to use the butter that's back there in that little spread container. And then we're going to use this absolutely gorgeous baguette that I get from Trader Joe's. This freezes so well when it defrosts. It's literally like you just brought it home from the store. It's so soft. And I'm just going to show you how we're going to use that to make the most delicious croutons. My daughter is obsessed. Like she smells them and she comes running. So roasting garlic is the key. Little piece of tin foil, four cloves of garlic and some olive oil poof in the oven for 400 degrees. We want to get it good and cooked up. And now here is is our baguette so I showed you guys I'm kind of using the wrong knife the bread knife was dirty and in the dishwasher that was running but you want to use a serrated knife as much as you can to cut through the bread that's the best way to get nice even pieces and you're going to cut that bread into strips and then you're just going to come back and cut it into cubes and we're going to go ahead and prep all the bread and then we're going to get it into a bowl with the goodies So once our garlic is roasted about 20 to 25 minutes, it even could have gone a little bit longer. We're going to smush it with a fork and add it to a bowl that has four tablespoons of melted butter. Now we want to layer the flavor. So we're going to take the bread and throw it now on top of that garlic and that butter. And then on top of that bread, we're going to go ahead and add some of our Parmesan cheese and then the bacon grease. So I took the pan that we're going to cook these croutons on through that grease onto the pan and let it melt and coat the pan. Better and safer than melting grease in the microwave. So once I put all that bacon grease onto that pan and got it melty, I added it to the bread with some Parmesan cheese and gave it a really good toss. And then I put the bread right back in the same pan that is all greased and ready to go. And then I remembered we had some of that shaved Parmesan and Asiago cheese left over from Trader Joe's just a little bit on the bottom but what perfect way to use that then to add it to these croutons and 400 degrees in that same oven that was already preheated for about 20 minutes came this you guys wow just wow and i put it in a like reusable container that has a closed up lid but i just wanted to show you guys what it looks like i wanted to reopen it because you can see immediately that condensation was building they were still super warm so i let them cool for a while before i closed the lid but that's how we store them right in that little container and we eat on them and they're so delicious all right, speaking of something that is so delicious, we're going to prep a chicken for my rotisserie. And I actually got obsessed with this seasoning. It's the 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. I used to use it all the time, but then Jen Chapin started putting it on everything. And so I started using it a little bit more often. And I definitely can say it is a seasoning that helps with one two three if you just want to season something quickly that is definitely the one to reach for and now this is my kasori toaster oven i talk about it in every one of my meal prep videos this is not sponsored they did send this to me way back but i talk about it all the time because i love it so this is also linked in my amazon store down below but you guys it's a rotisserie and that's the part that blows my mind every single time so we use it as a toaster oven every day and we also use it as an air fryer all of the time but when I get to use it as a rotisserie is when I feel like it's the most worth it to take up as much space as it does on my countertop because I love being able to do this. Now it has taken me a little bit of time to learn how to tie up that chicken. I've watched some videos. I've shared with you guys a little bit more in detail in the past. I even shared it in a 50 shades of chicken video, but I learned how to tie this thing really good and also tie it to the rod because this Kasori toaster oven recommends that you don't really put in anything 
that's over five pounds and if you do it gets so heavy that it doesn't turn very well and then it'll go and scrape the bottom and you just want to make sure that it stays as tight to the rod and stays that way for out throughout the entire process but you just stick it on the rotisserie setting and let it know how many pounds it is and then it just completely goes and this is what you end up with this is it cooled I let it cool and then once it was completely able to be handled I took it out of the toaster oven and threw it on a pan we just need to cut away all Miss Hen's bindings and once she is free and good to go you're going to pull out that rod and doeth what you wanteth with this chicken so i like to use this to make a chicken salad i like to use the carcass to make soup we'll use the chicken on the inside to make wraps chicken caesar wraps or ranch bacon some kind of wrap for lunch we'll use chicken quesadillas really the options are endless on what you can do with this chicken so i went ahead and peeled everything and i made a bowl and we're going to go ahead and make some chicken salad and then i did keep some chicken aside and i'm going to make some chicken quesadillas for the kids for lunch and then here is the carcass and all of the bones and i'm just going to save that in a bag in the freezer and whenever i need some broth i'll pull that out and some stock veggies and just make a really delicious and homemade broth but now we're we're gonna turn that back bowl into chicken salad so I've actually changed this recipe like a million times so I thought I had a golden recipe and I've shared it with you guys and then Vanessa went and screwed me up and put grapes in it and now I love it with the grapes and I love it with the dill but my husband can't be bothered with the dill but he loves the apple so now this is a whole mess of different things so we have black grapes red onion mayo honey the chicken I have some cut up walnuts some cut up almonds and then a little bit of craisins just a tiny package of craisins so this is like a conglomerate of different people's recipes that just keep changing it and it is so dynamite so i put in the different kinds of nuts the red onion the grapes the apple the craisins i really love the good squeeze of honey that's a trick that i learned way back when i worked at a bagel store when i was like 20 years old and they put honey in it and it was a game changer for me i absolutely love it that way and then mayo Everybody likes their chickens out a little bit different. Some people like it more on the dry side. We like it more on the wet side, especially since once it sits in the fridge, everything that you put into it ends up absorbing that mayo and we just don't like when it ends up being dry. So I always put in a little bit more so that whatever absorbs later, we still have a good and delicious chicken salad. And I gave it a little bit of a taste test and realized that we needed a little bit of seasoning. So I came back and added just a tiny bit of salt. When I use mayo, I don't like to do an over overwhelming amount of salt because it is salty already on its own but then I added in some black pepper and then some garlic powder and we gave everything a good mix and turn and then put it into the Tupperware that we're going to store it in. <laughs> Ask my kid what his favorite thing is that I make and he will tell you a condiment. That is right. My kid is obsessed with fresh ranch dressing. Now, last time I shared that Keto Ladies blue cheese dressing, which I've shared before. So again, I'll link that whole playlist for you guys to check out. But that blue cheese dressing blows this ranch away, in my opinion. But Jake loves some ranch. So I have some ranch seasoning here, some black peppercorns, some garlic powder, some mayo, and some buttermilk. Buttermilk is the key and just a two-quart container. So this is a one-quart container of buttermilk. So it fills half of our container container which ends up being the perfect judge for our measurements so once we put the buttermilk in we're going to put in a half a cup of ranch seasoning I like the Hidden Valley but there are plenty of recipes out there for you to make your own ranch seasoning there's even one in the Southern Keto Cookbook and we're going to go ahead and mix those two together it's easy to get those flavors mixed before you start adding in tons of mayo so I usually can tell by the consistency and how much the pitcher is filled on how much mayo it's put in because it's about three quarters of the pitcher is what it gets to and once you mix it around you can decide if you want your dressing a little runnier if you want it a little thicker if you want it a little runnier then 
you would just have added less mayo. Otherwise, you would add more mayo if you want it thick. Now, I would have stopped there, and that's where I've stopped before, but a good friend of mine, Heather, that I met here on YouTube as a subscriber, and she has long become a friend over these four years. When she saw me make my ranch dressing last time, she messaged me and said, Kira, try putting in black peppercorns and garlic powder, and I promise you it'll be a game changer. And she was not kidding. Now we love it that way, and we can tell the difference when we don't put it in. So we absolutely love it that way, and it's simple and it's easy and I've never bought bottled ranch dressing again since then. I just throw the top on it and I throw this in the refrigerator and this lasts about two weeks right when I think that it wouldn't be good anymore. We're out of it and we're ready to make more so it works out perfectly but I just we can't go wrong. We will never ever go backwards from making our own ranch dressing. I highly recommend it because you saw it's stupid easy. All right, the last thing for today is a little bit of a dessert. Normally, I share with you guys a little bit more dessert in my meal prep videos, but have you seen the videos that I've been putting together between the dessert hacks and this dessert collab? We have more desserts than we need in this house. So I just made one small batch of cookies for the kids, and that's these toffee oat ones I get from Trader Joe's. We've had these cookie mixes for forever because I keep making all of this other stuff. So we needed a little bit of softened butter. We needed a little bit of water. We're just using using the yolk of one egg and we're going to mix that in with the butter and get it all smooth and yummy. These things are so easy. These little kits from Trader Joe's because you barely have to add any ingredients. So once you've incorporated that all together, it wants you to use a mixer. I did not have time to take out a mixer for just that little bit of butter and egg that we were creaming together. And then you add the toffee mix into that. You mix those together, which this is the only thing I've ever said about these mixes this part is work if you're not going to do it without a mixer because you don't want to get your mixer dirty just for one small batch of cookies you definitely have to work at it to get it to where it sticks together and that's what that water is for it tells you like add one tablespoon of water little by little i only needed a half like i only added half of that tablespoon of water and i was able to get all of the cookies to come together but you do have to work at it until you get a ball rolling consistency and then once you get that we're just going to go ahead and start rolling our balls now this has never happened to me what's about to happen before but i just do little one inch balls it's the same size i do when i do my swedish meatballs and i put them in the oven but i'm really bad about again i don't want more dishes and stuff so maybe i should have separated them on two cookie sheets but i've never done that before but then this happened so what am i going to do with one giant cookie well while it was still warm I just used my cookie cutters and made different shapes, circles, hearts, that kind of thing. We improvise. It's my kitchen, right? It's your kitchen. You got to do what you got to do to improvise and make things work. And the kids were perfectly happy with it. And we actually took the little pieces that were in between and put it in a Tupperware and we used it for ice cream toppings like hello that was perfectly genius nothing went to waste which i absolutely love it and like i said i got creative i used pineapple cookies topper shapes and all sorts of things i had all the cookie cutters left over from maya's birthday so i had lots of fun and the kids loved it too so that's it for this time's meal prep video i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up next time i promise you i will have more new recipes to share i lost everything that i had originally so I kind of really have to build up my arsenal, but I promise you that it's coming to you. I love you guys all so much. Smash that thumbs up button, the subscribe button if you are new, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye guys.